All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth. And there's one thing about the truth, it will make you free. And the first thing you need free is your mind. Shalom, glory to the King. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this scripture study tonight. Open up our understanding. Give us understanding of your truth and your word. In the mighty name of Yahshua, I'm Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Not a bunch of preliminaries. <clears throat> There's a spiritual kingdom, uh, which we can not literally see, but it exists. The Bible speaks about it clearly. Um, it's an invisible realm to our particular eye. Uh, but we yet and still know that it's so real. Um, and then there's this mortal kingdom uh, that we're all involved in right now. Now, the Bible is very clear that after the breath go out of this body, um, that, that those of us that are in the Messiah, we're going to inherit new bodies. Does that make any sense? We're going to have new bodies. Um, and, of course, with the way some of these bodies feel, they make you want to have a new body, don't they? Hallelujah. Uh, turn to Luke, the 8th chapter, starting at the 28th verse. We have a, a few scriptures we're going to cover here. Now, everybody know that, you know, the, the debate is out. Uh, we talked about this some years ago here at Straightway, how that um, demonic spirits, or if I mean, disembodied spirits. Do you understand that? Disembodied spirits. And, of course, if you read the book of Enoch, along with Genesis, the 6th chapter, Better Sheep, the 6th chapter, you see that... Um, um, there's much to be desired as far as the conventional way of thinking what spirits are all about and what they are. Yes, sir. Am I making any sense? Yes, sir. Um, you know, some people think that demons are fallen angels, but then again, um, Enoch, I think it's the um, 15th chapter, Enoch 15, it, it talks about um, uh, these spirits being spirits that actually came from the union um, with the so-called fallen angels. Um, and, and the women. Are you following me? Um, but it never calls demons angels and angels demons. Angels are usually um, ascribed to the spirits that come from the Father, the, the ones that are clothed. We'll talk about that so we get some understanding on the clothes, okay? Luke 8, 28 says, And when, they, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of Yah, of the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. So they can be what? Tormented and they can feel pain. Is that correct? All right. And then he says this, For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, well, he commanded unclean spirit to come out of the what? Man. Are you not amazed that today unclean spirits are not dwelling in man if you're listening to the consensus of churches? Yes, sir. Is it not remarkable and amazing? Yes, sir. Hmm? You know, there's really truly not that much possession going on today, even though people act like they possess. Come on. Amen. All right, Father, we have a lot of oppression. Yes, right. yes, Am I making any sense? A lot of oppression, obsession, depression, you know, a lot of that going on today. Uh, if we really truly saw what you call a full-blown um, possession, um, it, would be, it would be one of those hair curling. You know, the hair will curl off the back of your neck and everything else. You really true. So we're dealing with things that, is all, that are oppressing us. Am I making any sense? That's what we're dealing with today. And that's the reason why warfare is needed. Needed to much so. And we have to frame our minds the way that the Messiah and the first century assembly looked at things and not today. Because they have psychologists, psychosis, psychological, and, you know, they have a way to explain away everything. They can explain away everything in this life right here. But we're going to stick with the book, all right? So he's out of a man. He says, for oftentimes it had called him, and he was kept bound with chains and feathers, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. So these things get pretty strong at times, which we can attest to that. We haven't seen any of this strong that can bait, break chains now. Maybe we'll all try that out sometime. Some of these spirits manifest and stuff, tie somebody up with chains, see what happens. If it breaks it, we can say, hey, we truly are a New Testament of church. All right? Verse 30, and Jesus said 
And Jesus asked again, uh, asked him, saying, what is thy name? So these spirits do have names then. Yes, sir. Does that mean? That means they have personalities. Amen. They're entities. Yes, okay? And they have a particular job to do. And he, said, and he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Now, the deep must be a place that they don't like. Is that making sense? A deep must be a place that these, these spirits don't want no parts of. Hmm? And it must be a place that Jesus could command them to go to. Hmm? So that's spiritual warfare knowledge right there then, isn't it? Hmm? We threaten them and torn them in them with the deep. Hmm? I don't have to know what the deep is. We just know they don't like it. It's good enough for me. Hallelujah. See what you can get out of this? You see all the things you can get out of this thing? Huh? The deep now. Look at this. Look at this now. Um, verse thirty-two. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him, and and that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. And when the devils, uh, then the devils went out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it to the city, uh, told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. Now, that's a lot of demons. That's a lot of devils. But this man have a, a legion of them and go into a herd of swine. All right? Look at this, look at this. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothing his right mind, they were afraid. Now, that's amazing. Anytime you become clothed in your right mind, people get afraid of you. Now, when you are chaotically insane, ignorant, flabbergasted, acting dumb, stupid, and everything else, people, you ride at home. Isn't that amazing? You literally at home. People at home when you're cutting the food. That's a bizarre behavior, man. Watch this. So what does this passage all tell us? Now look at this. Disembodied spirits can't find rest unless they are inhabiting something. We already know that they're comfortable inside of human beings. But they would even suggest even go into animals. But you see what happens when they go into animals, right? Immediate death. Are you following me? Maybe that's what killed them swine off over here. You remember them neighbors that had all that swine over there? The neighbor of Bell told us they were blaming us for killing their swine. We were killing them. Sending all them spirits over there. <laughs> Man, we got so upset at that smell. It's a nasty, vile, vulgar, isn't this? It's a foul smell. Really, uh, Rick up here told us that they believed that we were poisoning their swine. I kind of look, you know, you ain't going to tell Rick now. We're calling Rick just a truck driver, you know. A heathen truck driver. I just kind of. <laughs> Brother, we, we're not physically poisoning their swine. <laughs> but they did go away. They're not there no more. Thank y'all for that. Because <laughs> I know some of y'all. I guarantee you during deliverance, y'all was telling them demons, get over in them swine right now. They look at them mending now. <laughs> they they mending right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look. Y'all something else. Killing all folks' animals. But see, that, that's the thing about it, though. When you're doing stuff spiritually, they can't, they can't lay nothing to your charge because there are no laws to things that take place spiritually. Is that making any sense? What are they going to do? Come in here and say, well, we're going to get you. We're the spiritual police. We're going to arrest y'all for sending demons everywhere. <laughs> This is crazy, man. Think about that, though. All right, but anyway, they can't go on animals. Is that right? Um, and they can't have any rest unless they are actually physically inside. Because th these, these spirits went literally out of a man. Is that right? So that means we have to create a very intolerable condition. Uh, a, a place that these demons can't feel at home in. Does that make any sense? In order to be effective. Is that all right? 
All right, we're going to go to another passage. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. We're going to take this one a little bit slow, okay? But, you know, angels, you know, the good ones. Gabriel, Michael, you know, all them. Angel, Uriah, 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 Uriel, Uriel. You know, all them, those angels. Angels are disembodied spirits, but they are clothed with spiritual bodies. When these demons go out of men and they're casted to the swine like we just saw, they're looking for a place. In other words, they don't have a body. So therefore, they're tormented outside of a body that they don't inhabit it. Is that making any sense? But angels, they're clothed with a spiritual body and they go to and fro and go around. They even, they even, they even become men at times. Because remember, the Bible says you be careful when you entertain strangers. Unless you entertain angels unaware. That's what the book says. Is that right? All right, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, you understand, meaning it's perishing, it's decomposing, it's, it's in the grave. All right? We have a building, and it's talking about building of who? Yah. And house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with, look at this, our house. Y'all hearing this? So we groan earnestly to be clothed with our house. You understand that? Which is from heaven. All right, we're going to take a little bit more slow, okay? Now look at this. Listen to this real close. If so be that being clothed, see the key there? It already talked about this earthly tabernacle being dissolved. Now it's talking about us being clothed. If so, being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Y'all getting this? For we that are in this tabernacle, you know, this, this, this thing right here we are in right now. And ain't talking about this thing. This, this thing we're in heaven. He's talking about this thing. All right? He's calling this a tabernacle. Hmm? How clean is your tabernacle? All right. Do you keep the feast? Or are you feasting? <laughs> For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for what, not for that we would be unclothed. You hear that? Not for that we would be unclothed, talking about death, but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. Y'all notice I'm taking this deliberately very, very slow. Yes, now he that have wrought us in the self same thing is Yah, who also have given unto us the earnest, that's a down payment. That's, right. that's the Holy Spirit, the Ruah. Down payment of the Spirit. See, so we all have a portion of, the, of this Holy Spirit, all right? Therefore, we are always confident. How many times do you hear people doubting their salvation over and over and over again? Mm. You, I got some people who get one thought, one bad thought, and they're they, they going to hell. And when you look at some of the things that the patriarchs did and stuff, man, that, they were not threatened with hell. The most I just want them to repent. It's hard for y'all to believe that the most I, he's not sitting up there on top of this throne just waiting to bash you upside your head. We learned this condemnation spirit from Christianity. That's right. Amen. 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 Because it, it's a branch from the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. You know, they get people crawling up sidewalks on their knees and stuff and whipping themselves. <laughs> Drawing blood, sacrifices and everything. Just repentance to feel like they've done something. Ain't that right, Elder Doug? Told you. <laughs> Them Catholics are something else. All right, now let's go on for a second. I'm going to read verse 6 again. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that with we are at home in the body. We are absent from Yahshua. Y'all hear that? Now, the only reason why we're at home in the body right now is because of the earnest of his spirit. That's why we suggest that people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Does that make any sense? For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, that is again, I say, 
and willing rather to be absent from the body. You remember Paul said some time ago that, you know, I, I, I have a desire to get on up out of here, but it's better for you that I stay here. That, don't y'all think it's better for you that I stay here or get on up out of here? Ask me what I would like to do. <laughs> well, let me ask you, what would you like to do? You like to go, especially if there's no pain involved. Isn't that right? Uh, if you know you got you got a ticket straight to glory. You lay down. You know, hey, tonight you're going home. I promise you, you will not, you will not be. <laughs> would you? Huh? You be saying I'm going home. Shoot. Huh? You be the best. You'll be the best prophetess, sisters, or the best prophet ever lived. You're going to call everybody. I want everybody over the house tonight. Everybody come. Man, what do you want us to do? I, don't want, I want everybody to bring you the chickens. What do you want us for? I'm going home tonight, and I got some words for you. Then you call everybody, tell them what the words is. I am going home. Then you watch and see. We couldn't stone you, couldn't we? Because you had an inside track. So don't sit up and call me a hypocrite for wanting to leave when you want to leave before I do. <laughs> Y'all said, no, you can't go, you can't go. You're never. But, but then you can go. You talking about selfish. Bunch of leechers. Porch, porch monkeys. That's, that's coming in a new statement right there. That, that, <laughs> I was passing by Brother Jamie's house and I seen Heather and Nellie sitting out on the porch. I said, what are y'all doing? I said, we're practicing being porch monkeys. <laughs> I'm going on. I'm going on. All right. Um, verse 9. Wherefore we labor. See, that's the reason why we labor. We labor because we want to go in. Amen. You know, you, you understand. I mean, we're not just sitting on our do nothing. Hmm? Ain't it right, brother Desmond? You had a good day today, didn't you? Great day today. Ain't it right, brother Allen? Great day, yes, sir. You know they got a, the baptism of concrete today. <laughs> Wait till y'all see that video. <laughs> they did pretty good, but they got a baptism. Isn't that right? Mm, big old football, basketball players and stuff, and boy, now they got that playing on concrete. <laughs> Listen to it. <laughs> For we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted with him. See, now it's clear that there are two types of bodies. The one that we're living in right now, and the one we're going to be clothed with. Now, I don't understand why this particular passage of scripture is never ever discussed. It's hardly ever discussed, no matter what arenas you go into. I don't understand Matthew 27, starting in verse 50, but it's hardly ever spoke on. Most people won't even touch on it. Um, and I know the reason why, because it's kind of confusing. Because it, it goes from one scene to another scene, and then back to the original scene again. Matthew 27, verse 50. Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. What did he do? I mean, he gave up the spirit. Is that right? And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were open. See, a lot of people think that when you die, you're just going to be sitting down in the grave, soul sleeping. Let me clarify this for a second, all right? Just real quick, all right? When you die before, before. The death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. All right, you had Sheol and Guyana. You were going to one of those two places. All right, Abraham's bosom was a holding place of the saints. Are you following me? That was not a place of torment. They did go into the belly of the earth, but it was not a place of torment. They were waiting for their deliverer, the Messiah. So when you see that he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men, when he says that he took the keys to the gates of hell, are you following me? He, Jesus went down there and set all the saints, David and everybody else, who has been waiting their resurrection. 
Because he's the first fruits of the resurrection. They were waiting for the Messiah to come and raise them. Are you following me? And boy, they were happy to get up out of there too. Again, they were not in a place of torment. All right? Now, the people that were in the fire, they're in a place of torment. All right? And now comes the account when it starts to make sense. When Jesus starts talking about, you know, the rich man and Lazarus. Does that make any sense now? Yes, this big, great, big old gulf. Yes, you know what I mean? If he can't, if I tried to, I wanted to, I could not go to the other side. Well, just, hey, let, let him just dip his finger. On. Just one drop. Because I'm tormented in these flames. Y'all remember the account? Y'all remember the account very well? It's, I can't. It's, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Is it starting to make sense now? Yes, starting to make sense now? It's good. So he couldn't. And, and so, it, hey, what, what does everybody always think about first? They family. Let me go tell No, they got Moses and the what? The prophets. prophets. Let them believe it. They ain't going to hit them. Boy, they ain't coming in. So they ain't going to believe them. They ain't going to believe nobody. Amen. So if you, you have the opportunity to believe, you need to believe, be believing right now. Amen. Man, I was getting ready to go. Oh, believe, 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 believe. <laughs> all right, oh, hold on, deep breath. Everybody all right? Y'all expel any spirits? <laughs> All right. So the temple, oh, it was rent from top to bottom, verse uh, 52. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept did what? The now, they used the King James, you know, and the English language just so Babylonian. It's just tore all the fire. It really is. It, it, they wasn't sleeping. Are oh, you following me? They were not sleeping. Yeah, that's just the, the, the language that they use. It's a big barrier there, okay? Anyway, slept, arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection. Notice, when did they come out of the graves? Yeah. After his resurrection. But when you read this account, you, go, you, you, you pay attention because he's doing a lot of jumping here. One minute he's talking about him. He yielded up the ghost, all right? Came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That means these people were in the grave, all right? They raise up, now they're gone and they're talking to people in Jerusalem. Can you imagine seeing your dead saints, the people who died in the Most High? All of a sudden they come in, hey, how you doing? I'm here. What? And they didn't stick around either. All right, because look what it says. Watch this. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done they feared greatly saying truly this was the son of Yah you see how it jumped you see how it jumped scenes it, it, it fills in from 51 to 53 and then it jumps back to the, um, the impalement of the Messiah alright and many women were there beholding afar off which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. That means they took care of any needs that he might have. Yeah. Huh? That don't mean the women went around preaching. No. I mean, that's what these people, I'm, I'm telling you, they'll, they'll read that and say, see the women preaching. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, man, they'll, they'll do anything to try to make a woman a preacher. Yeah. I, I, I'm a preacher and can't understand. I don't even know why a man want to preach. And you and women want to preach? Out that, now that just broke. You ever seen them, them women that's preaching? They take on men characteristics. You know, well, me and brothers ain't seen this one boy. She, she led a little, little deacon husband in by the. She got him that, she got him that poop she Spreading her legs. And she hunkered down. Even walk with bow legged like a man. Now, all men ain't bow legged. I'm bow legged. Am I still bow legged, mama? I'm bow legged because I couldn't walk until I was about a year and a half old. Because my mom kept carrying me on her hip like this. That's a shame for a baby can't walk. How long did it take me before I walked? 15 months. How long? Oh, what I get a year? I got it from you. 13 months, still late. Big old fat baby. I got one picture, boy. It looks like somebody put a, 
a needle in me and, uh, and start pumping. <laughs> That's what Zephyr is starting to look like. Man, he was slim, boy, but look at him now. He feeling out, feeling out all right. He taking up all space. Um, Luke 24, verse 36. I'm going to read the 43 real quick, okay? I'm, I'm getting to a point here, all right? I'm mainly right now talking about the bodies. The bodies of the resurrection, how that we're going to have a new body. All right, and the vegetarian's in trouble because Jesus ate fish. These vegetarians trip me out. Well, I don't believe in eating meat. That, that weak spirit. I don't believe in eating meat. But then they turn around and, and go out and buy all these GMO foods. Now, if you want to be a vegetarian, have fun. I don't condemn you. But don't condemn me for eating meat. Of course, I wasn't going to be condemned anyway. There's just more meat for me to eat. That's the way I see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's the beef? He back in that back 40 when he get him too. <laughs> Verse 36. And as he thus spoke, Jesus stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen the Spirit. Now, you remember on the road to Emmaus? When Jesus was talking to these people and they did not, they couldn't recognize him? They didn't know who he was until after the fact that he had disappeared. Are right. oh, you following me? Then they realized that that was Jesus that they were talking to. Again, right here. So that tells me that there's going to be some change in these glorified bodies. I mean, because they, they, they really didn't recognize him. You know what I mean? When he started calling your name and you hearing his words and stuff, they, they started to recognize. So there's something going on. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Some of us, we need a change. Need all the help we can get. <laughs> all right. But notice, they were terrified. They were frightened. Suppose they had seen the spirit. All right. Because they knew they saw him impaled on the, on the tree. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not what? Flesh and what? Bones. So you mean tell me we're going to have flesh and bones even in the resurrected bodies? Wow. Isn't that something? Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? As ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed unto them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, and he said unto them, have ye here any meat? I mean, up until this time, they're still doubting. And they gave him a piece of boiled fish and honeycomb. He took it and he did eat before them. Now, as you can see, that there's going to be a change and we also going to, we're going to have glorified bodies or bodies that are clothed different from this one. Are you following me? You may not be able to recognize your facial, you know what I mean? But I often talked about taking people and sticking them into a crowd, change their voice and just let them talk. You should be able to pick up on who they are by their personality. If you're discerning enough. Because people have a certain way they talk. A certain way they phrase things. You understand? You should know. And a certain demeanor. Because it won't change the way that they. It just, you're just going to be changing the voice. And you should be able to pick them out. Most of us, we wouldn't be able to pick it out. Though, would we? No, we wouldn't. We have a rough time. Philippians 3.20. And then we're going to go to Hebrews, the first chapter, all right? Philippians 3, 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, who shall change our vile bodies. So our bodies are going to be changed. One way or the other is going to be changed. Do you understand this? All right, look what it says right here. That it may be fashioned like unto his Glorious body. So the body that we have is going to be changed to be fashioned like unto his glorious body. All right, because I man, ain't too much glorious about this body right now. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So we have a natural body that we're functioning in this realm right now, but there's going to be a spiritual body that we're all going to possess 
that's going to give us access not only to that realm, but here. Does that make any sense? And besides, we ain't going to have no need to go up in the glory anyway when the new Jerusalem come down and the Messiah is here. You understand what I mean? It'd be nice to fly around, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice to fly around? All you people want to go see the world, just have on, go see the world. I'm sitting next to the, to the, the I'm standing over in the, in the vineyard. I'm standing in the vineyard with me a lounge chair. I'm keeping me a big old flag in the wine. Jesus said, you're going to drink no more until you're drinking new what is in the kingdom, and I'm expecting a new drink. <laughs> what about that? Hmm? And I'm going to get full. <laughs> bro, they say, yes sir why do some of y'all face you, it's dull as I don't know what but when you start talking about wine man all of a sudden light bulbs go on you should see y'all bro I was at them oh yeah even the young ones gee I got a way to cheer y'all up man I just need to give me a big old bottle of wine hold it up Oppression come in here. I just hold a bottle of wine. It's gone. <laughs> wine just gleam. Just <laughs> Bunch of wine holes. I know what y'all saying. Hey, the kingdom of y'all is within us. <laughs> we getting the air start. <laughs> Look at y'all, y'all. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> y'all funny. Hebrews 1, starting at verse 4, okay? Now, I want y'all to pay attention and listen to what I'm saying here on this one, okay? Listen very closely. Being made so much better than the angels. It's not talking about us because we're going to be as the angels. He being made so much better than the angels. Do y'all understand it? As he have an inheritance, he, as he have by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son. Now you go into the Psalms and the Proverbs, you'll see David talking like this over and over and over again. All right. Thou thy son this day have I begotten thee, and again. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me the son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world. Now, what did he do? The first begotten he brought where? Into the world. Is that right? All right. He said, let all the angels of Yah worship him. Who was that? That was Jesus. He was already existing before he even got here. Oh, you understand? He transcended, shoop, came in. And it's amazing. Everybody, we don't worship the Messiah. But y'all said, let all the angels do what? Worship, worship him. Right. People say they can't make the connection that y'all made himself a body. Y'all right. is a what? Spirit. spirit. Is that hard? No. Y'all is a spirit. Is that hard? No. But in order for us to see the express manifestation of y'all, he had to make a body yes. for this realm. He had an earth suit. Is that all right? You know people out there saying there are two gods now? I'm talking about spiritual people too. They say you're going to see Yahweh you sitting up here and you're going to see Yahshua over here. And I see your damn lie too. Because if I see Yahweh sitting up here and Yahshua sitting up here, I'm going to get my sword. And I'm going to make the Bible right. <laughs> Got more than one head and head and you Y'all don't think I'd do something like that either, would you? I mean, he could probably just take a lightning bolt and knock me all the way back to the earth or something like that, but I'll get back up. Just repent. I believe what I believe because you gave me the book. Don't fault me. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, what was that? Okay, verse 7. Look at this. And unto the angels, he saith, 
who make of his angels what? Spirits. And his ministers, that's the people who carry the message. Look at this. A flame of fire. Y'all hear that? So he make his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. No wonder y'all be feeling so hot when I ain't in here preaching a lot. Y'all be sitting on them seats squirming. Hmm? That, that heat and that fire is. <laughs> yeah, brother, it's <Rich> you. <laughs> That's all right. Skip down to verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits? See that? Are they not all what? Ministering spirits. That means these, these ministers have to have some type of spirit in them in order to minister. And their spirit has to come from the Father. Is that correct? So he said, not that all ministering spirits send forth to minister for them. Somebody say me. me. And you didn't say nothing. You exempt. <laughs> Who shall be heirs of salvation? Are y'all heirs of salvation? Yes, sir. So they're sent for you. Ain't that something? So here I am, sent for you. By the Father. Y'all getting that? Why? Now here's the kicker right? because you are an heir of salvation. Oh, never mind. You just missed the punchline, man. You just let the joke's dry now. Just missed the whole thing. I'm sitting up and telling you, air of salvation, we should have had a Holy Ghost smackdown in here. Yeah, that's what the full soul does, don't it? Anyway, y'all good to go. Second Peter 2 4. And then we'll go to Jude, and we're done. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Hmm? I mean, you learn about demonic spirits, the difference between them and the angels, and then the bodies. And then you just got finished told that you're heirs of salvation. And so to make sure you, to know that you're an heir of salvation, Yah puts a, his spirit inside of a man, makes him a flaming fire to minister to you. Isn't that something? I think it's all right. I really truly do. And look at this. If Yah spared not the angels that sinned. Now notice. Now it's saying angels that did what? Because they left their first habitation. Are you following me? They were just like all the rest of them up there. Huh? But now, notice. He didn't spare them that sinned. But cast them down to what? Hell. Delivered them into chains of darkness. But watch this. To be reserved. You hear that? Unto judgment. So now watch this. If these angels are cast down, all right, Paul, are you listening? And they're in chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, then they can't be demons. There's got to be a total set of spirits, a whole different set, a whole set of spirits. It said. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I know what Christianity done to your head, but I'm telling you what it says. You can read it for yourself. Where they at right now? In hell. That's what it says. That's what it says. And they're in chains. They're bound. You know, we've been taught these these one third that fell and stuff. Now they down here causing all this chaos on earth. No, that's Satan doing that. In the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So if they're in chains of darkness, darkness in hell being reserved unto judgment, then who's raising all this hell on this earth then? It ain't these people. Or these cats. Because they ain't people. They spirits. Does this make any sense? Okay, Jude 1.6. See, see, see what it does? Another... Another theological doctrine is just. <laughs> Don't y'all just love that sound? Can y'all hear that online when I do that? Oh, y'all can? Man, that gets me, boy. 
There's some, there's some, there's a charge in there. There's something going on. I get, I get excited. Man, that stuff is. <laughs> and that's um, exhilarating. Like you want to chop somebody's head off. You get, yeah, I get excited about chopping heads off, don't you? Elias, do you chop them chickens' head off? Do you get excited about it? You bloody man. Huh? Elias, I'll be the first one up there. <laughs> Good thing Scott bought a whole box of them things in there. I don't have no fear. I got plenty of them. This guy bought, he bought a whole bunch of these things, man. He, he set me up good. <laughs> All right, Jude 1 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, first estate meaning up in glory, the original way that they were created. Are you following me? But left their own habitation. Are you listening? Got to have line upon line, precept upon precept here, little and there, little. Is that right? Yes, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Right. So it cannot be these fallen angels that was booted out of glory yes, that's causing all this demonic activity here on this earth. Then, yes, boy, Christianity got your mind like spaghetti, don't it? Yes, it's hard to bend it to it. <laughs> You're reading it, still tough. Huh? Them mental gymnastics. Woo! <laughs> hey, right, brother Allen. He said, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a preacher's son. Grew up in the church. Elder in the church. He's, he's, he's having a, he having a coming to party. Ain't that right, brother? Just sit there and die slowly. Don't worry about it, but just die, though. So you can live. Yes, sir. <laughs> you can see he's sitting over there. He hearing all this theology that he's done been believing all his life, and it's just. That's when you grab. Come here. Come here. Come here, brother. Brother, you come here. That's when you take somebody and stand Stand up in front of me, son. That's when you take him by the neck and get up close to me and just give him. Isn't it nice when false doctrine is dying? You come alive now. I bet he can't wait to get back and tell somebody this. That's a good thing, isn't it? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and what is America turning into? Did not the Messiah warn us that this how it would be? I told you. One day, how many years ago was that, um, brothers and sisters, I stood up. I think it was either on a radio broadcast. It had to be one or two places. A radio broadcast or in the pulpit. I, I got up and the first thing I said was, Thank God for the faggots. Yes, sir. What? <laughs> Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. It was a pulpit. I said, Thank God for the faggots. Everybody sit there just like y'all doing. Thank God for the faggots. Yeah, because it's one of the pure signs that we're in the end time. And the king is coming. Because he told us it was going to be like that. And boy, they flaunt. They excited too. Yeah, they are too, brother. Man, yeah. They're flaming. Hmm. And, and, and they ain't ashamed no more. They are not ashamed. They don't care if you see them. I never understood that they, why they so they expect so much out of us. They want us to be so tolerant of their lifestyle, but yet they're intolerant of us. Uh, what hypocrites? You faggots. Now they get on YouTube, they're going to put another strike on my account again. You know that, right? I get strikes all. I'm on. I'm on a strike again. It's in, I get clear for about a week or two, and then I get another strike again. 
You get two or three of them things, they close your account. Make no difference to me. I ain't going to bite my tongue. A fag is a fag is a fag is a fag. Now, you know a fag used to be a cigarette, right? Used to be a cigarette. That's the way he did it for your time. Yeah, it did. Just like gay used to be happy. See how the names change? Ethnology of words, see how it's changing? Hmm? You never knew gay was happy, did you? You knew that in school? Hmm? You mentioned gay today, what's the first thing coming to your mind, though? Faggots. Hmm? You're going to run around and say to everybody, you gay. <laughs> you has an insult. Huh? All right. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and, get, and going after strange flesh. You know, I need to do a message on fornication and strange flesh because it ain't what we think it is. Look at me. And you know, I got the Bible to believe it too. I can Bible it. Uh oh. Look at that. That brother, I love it. You seeing it, brother? Jeez. Is this thing ever stop? No, it don't stop, brother. Um, and set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You mean tell me them people in Sodom and Gomorrah, they, they suffering the vengeance of eternal fire? I mean, that's kind of like those people in the wilderness. Remember how people, it opened up and it went down alive into the pit? What do you think these folks... They got their parents in Sodom and Gomorrah where they went. They didn't go to glory. Mm -mm. They are suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So y'all understand this, right? Y'all no good? good to go? All right, good. Let us stand. Father, we thank you for these words of truth. Pray these sayings sink deep down in our hearts. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Amen. Shalom.